Welcome back to the Infinity Castle arc where I'm making it my objective to go over all the fights within the arc. In the last video I recapped the battle between Shinobu, Kanao, Inosuke and Domo. The next fight we're going over is going to be the battle between Giyu and Tanjiro versus Akaza. The battle begins with both Tanjiro and Giyu rushing through the Infinity Castle in search of Muzan and Tamayo. It's at this moment that both Slayers are informed about the death of Shinobu and Upper Moon 2 Domo, which completely shows both of them. They wouldn't have time to grieve however as all of a sudden they heard crashing from above and no other than Upper Moon 3 Akaza would arrive. Akaza would then comment on how a weakling like Tanjiro could be alive. Both would scream out each other's names as Akaza would go into attack but he would severely underestimate Tanjiro as the young slayer would then use Hinokami Kagura to not only dodge Akaza but then to counter attack. You have to remember that the last time Akaza Akaza came in contact with Tanjiro was during the Mugen train. Since then, Tanjiro has gotten a lot stronger. Akaza would quickly go into attack again, but Tanjiro would once again use Hinokami Kagura fake rainbow. You know Tanjiro has improved when Giyu even compliments him, stating that Tanjiro has the same power as a Hashira. Rengoku would be proud. Speaking of Rengoku, Akaza now remembers the words that Rengoku said back in the Mugen train arc. This boy isn't weak. Don't insult him. Akaza would then accept that back then Rengoku was correct and out of respect to Tanjiro, Akaza would go all out. He would use his technique Compass Needle in which Giyu would finally enter the battle and use his third form of water breathing, Dance of the Swift Current. Akaza would then be amazed by Giyu explaining that he's not faced a water Hashira in over 50 years. Akaza would then reply with his own technique Destructive Death Disorder but Giyu would quickly counter with his 11th form, Dead Calm. Now if you remember correctly, the 11th form of water breathing is an original technique that Giyu developed, which even Akaza comments on saying that the last water Hashira never used such a technique. Tanjiro would then go into attack from behind using Hinokami Kagura Raging Sun, but Akaza would avoid this and follow up with an attack, in which Giyu would just about stop by using Water Wheel and taking Akaza's arms clean off. Both Giyu and Akaza would then battle it out as Tanjiro goes into attack again, trying to take Akaza's balance by cutting off his legs. But Akaza senses this and knocks Tanjiro straight up into the air. Tanjiro was able to block this attack, but the sheer force of the kick still made his nose bleed. Akaza would be incredibly impressed by Giyu and even asks for the water Hashira's name. But Giyu would decline to give his name to the demon and explains that he doesn't like speaking, so tells Akaza not to talk to him. Akaza explains that he'll just keep asking the Slayer for for his name and continues to then kick him through several walls. Akaza actually wouldn't have to wait long to find out the water Hashira's name as Tanjiro would scream out Giyu's name which is when we get this creepy panel of Akaza saying so his name's Giyu. Akaza and Tanjiro would then continue to battle with Akaza stating that he was glad that Rengoku died that night as he most likely wouldn't have gotten any stronger. This infuriates Tanjiro telling Akaza not to speak of Rengoku. Akaza would then explain his philosophy philosophy on hating the weak, but would be quickly countered by Tanjiro, who said that Akaza was once weak himself, and that the laws of nature is that the strong protect the weak until the weak can become strong, who in turn protect those weaker than them. This would annoy Akaza when in that very moment a figure of a man would appear behind Akaza, recalling the very words Tanjiro just said. Akaza would then try to punch behind him, but the figure would suddenly disappear. This would leave Tanjiro absolutely stunned as from his his perspective, Akaza just punched the air for no reason. Akaza would then explain Tanjiro as being unpleasant and would go into attack once more. Tanjiro and Akaza would then go blow for blow, both impressed by each other's abilities. Akaza then tries to grab Tanjiro's blade and Tanjiro tries to break free but his blade won't budge. When out of nowhere, Akaza's hands are sliced off and Giyu re-enters the fight. The water Hashira would exclaim how he was so angry in that moment with the upper moon free demon when at that very moment Giyu Tomioka would activate his slayer mark. Both Giyu and Akaza are now evenly matched in speed going blow for blow. Tanjiro would sit there and think about what to do next baffled by how precise Akaza's attacks are. Tanjiro would then recall the words of Inosuke explaining that he can sense murderous intent and if someone is planning to attack Inosuke his body stings all over. Moreover if a person has no killing intent then Inosuke can't sense them at all. Tanjiro then goes 
goes in to attack Akaza once more, but the attack is blocked and Akaza swings at Tanjiro. Luckily, Tanjiro is able to avoid this attack and steps back for a moment. He continues to then have flashbacks, but this time recalling the words of his father, that with each move you have to think about each breath and step. He then recalls his father talking about the transparent world, something that an individual can achieve if the mind is invisible. Tanjiro's father demonstrated this once when he took a bear's head clean off with just an axe. He does this without showing any murderous intent and his body just does it. If you're confused by this, think of this technique as similar to Goku's Ultra Instinct. I know it's a completely different anime, but the intention is similar. The mind isn't really thinking in battle, but the body is still acting. Tanjiro then remembers that Akaza's attack earlier should have definitely hit him. It should have connected and yet Tanjiro was able to avoid it. Cutting back to the battle between Giyu and Akaza, we can see that Giyu is beginning to struggle against the demon when Akaza suddenly breaks Giyu's blade. But just before the worst can happen, Tanjiro takes Akaza's hands clean off yet again. Tanjiro has now entered the transparent world and his senses are heightened. Akaza is completely shocked by this development and deploys his technique once more. Giyu would then use his 11th form, but the attacks were too random and too quick so the water Hashira took some blows. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is beginning to see every move in slow motion. Tanjiro also has zero murderous intent as well as Akaza believes Tanjiro to be dead when the Slayer is standing right behind him. Tanjiro however would be very much alive and screams out to Akaza that he will now behead the demon. Akaza is completely taken off guard by this development as he can't sense Tanjiro's fighting spirit at all. It's at that moment when Tanjiro takes Akaza's head clean off. Akaza is again bewildered by this development, comparing it to like fighting a plant. Tanjiro has finally mastered both the transparent world and the selfless state, which again, for those that are confused, it's basically like Ultra Instinct. Akaza would begin to panic and try to attach his head back to his body, but Giyu would throw his broken blade at the demon, pushing the head away from the body. The fight, however, isn't over. Akaza's head disintegrates, but his body continues to fight. Akaza's body would then kick Tanjiro into a wall. Tanjiro would try to recover from this, however, because of the stress and exhaustion of the battle, Tanjiro would pass out. Tomioka would try to protect Tanjiro by continuing to fight. And this is where Akaza would begin to have flashbacks himself to when he was a human. Back when Akaza was human, he went by the name Hakuji. The young boy grew up with his father who was very sick, and in order to get medicine for his father, Hakuji would resort to stealing money from others. However, one day he's caught while trying to steal, and he ends up getting beaten up and even arrested. He then gets marked with tattoos as a way of branding him as a thief. Akuji is then warned by the people of the village that if he ever tries to steal again, he'll have his hands cut clean off. Once Hakuji's father learns about the news, he ends up hanging himself to avoid being a burden to his son. Akuji would learn about the news and would feel massive regret. Akuji was then banished from his own town and with so much anger and nothing to lose, he took it out on people by beating them up. However, one day a man named Keizo, the local owner of a dojo, appears and ends up fighting Hakuji. And to Hakuji's shock, Keizo absolutely floors him. Keizo then offers to take the younger boy in and teach him how to fight. In return, all Hakuji would need to do is look after Keizo's daughter, who was incredibly sick at the time. Some time would then pass with Koyuki finally in good health, now able to stand and do chores, while Hakuji on the other hand continues to train under Keizo as a pupil of the Soryu style. In fact, one day after training, Keizo offers Hakuji to take his daughter in marriage. Being embarrassed and surprised, Surprised by this, Hakuji immediately agrees, now promising to protect both his master and his new wife, even if it's at the cost of his own life. Some time would pass again as all three would attend a festival where they would watch the fireworks. It was during this festival that Hakuji would be honest with Koyuku and tell her about his troubled past as well as his father's death. Hakuji would then visit his father's grave and inform him of his marriage, but then while returning from his father's grave, he quickly realises that something doesn't feel right. A student of the dojo informs Hakuji that their rivaling Kenjutsu dojo, which had sought to Keizo's land for themselves and prevented him from getting any students, had poisoned the well. Keizo and Koyuku drank from this very well and because of this, they both shortly died afterwards, leaving Hakuji in despair, also causing him massive grief as his promise to protect both of them was broken. Hakuji would be enraged by this and would 
would head to the rivaling dojo where he would kill all 67 members with his bare hands. The news of all these deaths would make it to Muzan who would believe this to be an act of a demon. However, upon Muzan's arrival, he's surprised to see that this was actually a human that was the cause of all these deaths and because of this news, Muzan would offer Hakuji to become a demon who would then later be known to be Akaza. With Hakuji now having nothing left to live for, he accepts the blood of Muzan and becomes a demon, even forgetting his life as Hakuji. Back in the present day, Tanjiro awakes from his earlier battle to see that Akaza has regenerated half of his head already and Akaza would go in to kill Giyu, but not before Tanjiro would dash forward to attack. However, Tanjiro would lose grip of his sword and he would instead punch Akaza straight in the face, which would once again remind Akaza of Keizo. Akaza would feel massive regret for turning his master's Soryu style into a destructive weapon and as a way to cleanse his sins, he would use his own technique on himself, completely destroying his body. Muzan would try to convince Akaza to regenerate and keep fighting, but the spirit of Koyuku would appear and tell Akaza he's done enough. And with that, the demon that was known as Akaza would turn back into Hakuji and would cry into Koyuku's arms, with Hakuji finally at peace. He begins to disintegrate completely, while the spirit of Koyuki tells him, welcome back my husband. With that, the battle would finally be over as Tanjiro would once again begin to pass out. I personally love this battle because of how much backstory we get from Akaza and it really fleshes out Akaza's character a bit more. In my next video, I'll be covering the fight between Zenitsu and Kaigaku as, oh my god, that fight is one of the best fights in the Infinity Castle arc and really completes Zenitsu's character development. Until then, click on this video if you want to see me recap the fight between Shinobu and Doma, but if not, internet stranger, then I hope you have a good day. Pine tree logging off.